What up, what up, everybody? It's your boy CG back to you guys again with some more crypto news and information. Now, before I get into today's articles, if you guys could do me a favor, hit that like button. It's, it's the easiest way to show support. It takes less than a second and it brings more awareness to the channel. Google's been hoeing me lately, so I can't promote the way I used to. So anything helps. So if you guys could like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, <laughs> it would make a world of difference to me. But yeah, getting to today's first topic. Five reasons why institutional investors refuse to join the crypto sector. Now, a lot of people believe this narrative that we need institutional investors for the crypto sector to grow, which is extremely retarded and kind of goes against the idea of why crypt people or cryptocurrencies were created in the first place. But you guys have seen me men make mention of it in past videos where I say follow the institutional investors, follow the money, and it's not, I'm not necessarily saying that we need these um, big institutions to be in the sector, in my personal opinion, but I am saying that to be aware of what's taking place without it being announced, really, in the mainstream on like a large scale where it's being pushed in your face. Follow the footprints. But yeah, let's get into it. So first thing, first reason why they're not really just jumping in like the bigger companies, the majority of them, the on-ramp remains too steep. So... It remains a significant hurdle for large mutual fund managers, especially when considering their perceived risk of Bitcoin. Add to this the additional purchasing steps necessary compared to more traditional assets, which is what I've been, well, which is, I don't think I've said this before, but what I've always thought is not easy for them to just jump into the cryptocurrency universe and just make that transition. Although there are in instruments being built by um, more um, trustworthy players in this regard, there's, the demand is still not there. The liquidity is still not there. Um, the, there's just a lot of stuff going on in the traditional finance sector that isn't just ready to make that leap of faith, you know? Well, not allowing them to just make that leap of faith. So next up, presence does not equal profit or guarantee. So this is, I wouldn't say that this is really um, a barrier for entry. I would say this is more like a real, a reality check for people who think that we need institutions. Just because you see a billion dollar fund jumping into crypto doesn't mean that, oh, bull market, we're about to see great prices. You know, we might have people jumping in to short sell, like, for instance, I covered an article the other day where I talked about a $10 billion fund moving into the CME. And in that particular case, they could be shorting the price of Bitcoin. So just because you see these big, this big money making moves in certain areas is not always a good thing. So people need to be more aware of that. Compared to traditional markets, the crypto sector is too small. And this is actually a really great illustration of this. Um... A, a really great illustration and it actually kind of proves an, another point that I would be trying to make that we are still in an infancy stage right here this is crypto compared to everything else the cryptocurrency sector is not even bigger than Apple or Amazon to let alone the USD in circulation or the gold market cap and to be honest with you I think if crypto was to even hit half of the gold market cap we would see you would have a lot of people who, how can I put this, would have made significant amount of money at that point. I think at just touching the U.S. dollars market cap, I think we would see a lot of people have made a lot of money out of this sector. Even people were just in this sector for play, just to play around and make a quick few bucks. So... This just shows you how early it is that we are in this thing and that we do have a potential upside that we can't even comprehend yet. So I would suggest that everybody, you know, sit tight, do some do more research into this thing and find out if this is where you really want to be. Um the next one, regulatory pressures. We already know this. Like the governments are really making a big deal out of um, cryptocurrencies and how these companies are trying to have token representations of themselves. It's it's a big thing, which is it, it's just stupid to me because they do all these other things, in my opinion, that are illegal to, a, to certain degrees and certain aspects that they do in, in front of people's faces and act like we're stupid and we don't see it. And then they try and crush the, the layman's um, methods of the 
of getting to where they are. And it's crazy and it's funny, even though I do believe that BTC was invented by the government, but that's a story for another day. I, It's just crazy to me to see all this regulation around people trying to invest into Bitcoin, basically telling people what to do with their freaking money. It's retarded. And I understand that we have a lot of idiots out there, but for, but it's it's the world, man. It's it's natural selection. I believe in natural selection. If you're an idiot, you're an idiot, and you're gonna pay for being an idiot. You should pay for being an idiot. But hey, that's just me though. Liquidity and ease of access. So they're just talking about once again restating, I guess, from the first from the first point, liquidity and the interfaces that you have to go through. They're, they use Bact as, as an example, even though Bact has products for bigger players. Um, the interest is not there, the demand is not there. And once again, like I said, it's a lot of the regulation and all that type of stuff. It's a lot of politics. Why I feel like things aren't taking off the way people expected them to take off. But the fact is, Bact is there and it's ready to go. So when these players do wise up and want to start moving in this direction on mass or en masse then we will see things start to pick up on this side but to me i really don't care because like i said crypto was made for the people it is for the people and people need to understand that we need to take advantage of it while it's still something for us and not something that's going to be out of our reach or i'm not even gonna say out of our reach but something that we can't use as a vehicle to create wealth anymore if you get what i'm saying next article though or the last article actually ethereum scaling and gas free transactions have arrived and this is one of my favorite um things about eth eth is a constantly evolving protocol or platform eth doesn't just stop growing eth se seeks out um its weaknesses and people are capable of correcting that or developing on it and transforming ETH into what it should be. And whether that's a good or bad thing, I'll leave that up to people to see through their, you know, to people's own individual perspectives. But that's one of the things I do like ETH and I think ETH has over Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin's protocol is really simple and its integrity or structural integrity is why people like Bitcoin. But let's be real. For Bitcoin to get over that adoption curve, ETH beats it in, in every way because ETH can adapt quickly. That's why I say Bitcoin is good for right now, but I feel like in the future, who knows? Maybe it'll just be the US, the stable coins that are really making the transactions and Bitcoin will become that store of value once it grows enough in the future. Kind of like how gold had to go through price i mean look at it like what was gold's all-time high i think like what four thousand dollars five thousand dollars and then they had that sharp drop all the way down to like 1200 i think 1100 or 1200 i mean that's a pretty big freaking drop but hey what do i know but yeah so we have two companies building on top of eth by economy and synthetics synthetics is basically dealing with the scaling solutions and optimizing the speed of ETH so ETH could be many times faster. And this is not ETH 2.0, guys. ETH 2.0 doesn't come out for another couple months. These people are building on ETH 1.0, and they actually have big money behind them as well. So Biconomy is the second one, and they're dealing with um, gas-free transactions with um, decentralized apps on the Ethereum protocol. So... This is basically going to remove the um, the difficulty curve for um, developers to onboard people or users onto their applications because it's going to make it easier and simpler for them to understand what it is they need to do to actually get these dApps up, up, up and working. On top of the fact that by economy may be blockchain agnostic, blockchain agnostic meaning that by economy can be used on any other blockchain. So it could be used on, besides ETH, it could be maybe used on Zilliqa or freaking um, like Cardano or, you know, whatever other, block, whatever other blockchain there, project or protocol there is out there. But the idea is that these people are building on ETH first for a reason. On top of the fact that Biconomy has these very big partners behind them. I don't really know most of these people or companies, but I do know Matic Network. And the fact that all these 
big developers or people are putting money into Ethereum to be where it needs to be, it's crazy. Active ETH users double since January. So we haven't seen active user numbers like this since June of 2019. Um, the active users has jumped up to around 500k um the creation of unique eth addresses has been has been kind of in a limbo of 50 50k to 100k in early 2020 now after march is 100k plus every day and this is daily guys these numbers are daily new people being or jumping into eth the total number of unique addresses now exceed 96 million that's freaking crazy eth is bigger than btc and while it may not reflect that right now on market cap, this is why I believe Ethereum's bull run or Ethereum's run is going to dwarf BTC by a large margin. And that's my personal opinion. I could be completely wrong. Like I said, this is just my perspective on everything. But everybody, this has been your boy CG. Have a great day. Stay safe. Wash your hands.